Hey mamas, today we're going to be diving into Singapore Dimensions Math, level KA, KB, and 1A, 1B. I'm gonna be sharing some pros and cons from my perspective about the curriculum, as well as maybe some things that I would change about it and why we're gonna continue using it in this upcoming school year. I wanna just share a couple of tidbits before I begin. So this curriculum actually goes from pre-K all the way up to grade five, and I think past that point, they have other different types of curriculum and books. The other thing about it is that it is based in math education from Singapore, hence the name Singapore Dimensions. This curriculum should not be confused, however, with Singapore math. Totally different curriculum, but I think it belonged to the same company. So you can find the Singapore Primary Math on the same website. One of the things that I really like about this curriculum, so I guess this is my first pro about it, is the fact that it is a spiral curriculum, which I think most math curriculum are. So I'm just gonna give you a comparison so you can see. This is numbers to 100, and as you can see for level KB, it's a lot more extensive. We're gonna be covering counting by 10s and looking at numbers to 30, 40, 50, 80 so on and then we arrive at a hundred for 1b we're gonna be extending that so we have numbers to a hundred and then we have the chapter opener which I'll talk about a little bit later numbers to a hundred immediately so we're gonna be looking at that as soon as we get into that chapter and then we have tens and ones counting by ones or tens, comparing numbers to 100. Here are the very first pages. So again, this chapter opener is very, very similar. The child is gonna kind of look for different patterns and talk about that. And then as you can see, the first page of this chapter that you're gonna go through with the child has very similar objects. So this is gonna be very familiar with them. So we have the pencils there, and then we introduce the dominoes, another concept, and they actually cover this in the same sequence. So we have time and then money. And so we have our look and talk pictures. For the KB level, we're focusing on this child and what they do at different times of the day. And then in the 1B version, we have actual clocks here represented, different ways to tell time. And then we actually have the clock introduced in level KB, whereas again, we have the clock just being reviewed in level 1B. My second pro about this curriculum is that it does incorporate five different characters that are consistent through all the different levels, and their names are Emma, Alex, Sophia, Dion, and May. They are a diverse group of characters, and that for me is actually really important so that my children understand that the world around us are made up of so many different kinds of people. One of the cons of this curriculum, however, is that it does not come with manipulatives. I actually personally like to use Montessori manipulatives. This first one is the Seguin board. In level KB, the child is introduced to this concept of police values. It's a soft introduction, and all they do is look at the number 10, and then they add a one to it to make a new number. And this was so helpful because my child could do it in sequence. So up there I have 11, and then 10 and two make 12. And so all the child does is they have these wooden pieces and they slide it into place. So then eventually they'll see 11, 12, 13, 14, and they understand that it's increasing in number as they're looking at 10 and whatever number makes that new number. Another manipulative was Unifix cubes because I noticed from the get-go when I started with level 1A that it did have pictures of Unifix cubes to help the child understand the addition and subtraction concepts. Then I have coins, so money and the dollar bills. And then we have a clock, which is really great for my child to manipulate as they learn about time. Even though this curriculum does not come with its own manipulatives, 
they have a whole host of free printables on their website and I'll link it below so that you can take a look at it. It is actually free to everyone. You don't have to have like a, a code or something in the book to access them. I found this to be so helpful and right now I'm in the process of printing and laminating their fact cards, so their addition and subtraction facts, because that's something that my kids need to continually practice. I know um, curriculum like The Good and the Beautiful and Right Star Math, they all come with some manipulative, so they're box curriculum. This is not that. However, you can buy a set that includes two teacher's manuals, two textbooks, two workbooks. So you do have kind of like a box curriculum when you get the set, but again, it does not come with those manipulatives. I do appreciate that you can either buy it as a set or buy the books separately because I was finding personally that I did not need the teacher's manuals. But for what we were doing in our homeschool, I just wanted to kind of go through the material and have them then you know practice concepts on their own. In the beginning though when I started to use this with my then first grader I really didn't know what I was doing because it was my first year homeschooling so the teachers guides were actually pretty helpful in that regard but once I started to get going I totally let go of those teachers manuals and just again, just open the book and started the lesson with them. The way the book is broken up is you have chapters and then lessons within the chapters. And at the very end of each chapter, there is a cumul cumulative practice test that kind of goes back and covers all the different things that the child has learned in that chapter. I love this because this gives me a great idea of what my child is strong in and what they need a little bit of work in. For the workbook specifically, it's also divided into chapters, except you don't have lessons, you have exercises. So this is something that I like to give my kids when they're doing independent work. What I love about the workbooks is that all of the pages are perforated. So at at first, I was just giving them the entire workbook and saying, here's what pages I want you to work on. But I decided to start tearing the pages out because I was finding that it was a little bit overwhelming for them to be given a book versus just given, you know, being given one or two pages to work on in their front and back. The other thing that I really like, so another pro, is the fact that each of the exercises within the chapters have a, a set of challenge questions at the end of them. So these are things things to kind of help push the child in their knowledge of whatever they were covering. Like I mentioned before, when you buy the full set, it comes with two teacher's guides, two te textbooks, two workbooks, and now two test booklets, which I don't think I got when I bought the set originally. So that's something that they are now including. There is a set for classroom teacher, and there is another set for home instructor, so two different versions. And what I'm seeing here is that the teacher set, the in classroom, teacher set is $135.80. However, the home instructor's version is $146.60. Now, if you're not interested in getting the teacher's guides or the test booklets, and you're just wanting to get the textbooks and the workbooks, that is going to cost $12.80 per book. So for me, that's what I did, and I got enough that I got free shipping. The other thing is that some of their books they sell at a discounted price depending on the condition of the book. So I think I got one of the books for like $11 because it had like a crease in it or something small like that. So I was able to save some money by getting a book that wasn't exactly perfect. Another pro for me and my kids is how they do their chapter opener. So it introduces whatever concept that they're learning in the chapter through pictures. And I thought this was really fun because because it's low stress. My kids don't have to, you know, put their pen or pencil to the paper and start answering questions. They can just talk through picture that a picture that they see. And so the characters are represented sometimes and other times it's just a picture of like an ocean with 
fishes in it or a playground or a home with windows, things like that. And they would have just opener questions to have the child just get curious about what they see in the picture and how that is related to what they're going to learn in that chapter. And again, this is something that you're going to see across all of the levels. For me, this isn't a con, but it might be for you. I know that some curriculum have different storylines that are attached to what the kids are learning. So I think Master Books um, math curriculum does that. This is not the case. This is a very plain Jane kind of curriculum. So if you're looking for something that is going to be engaging for your child in that way, then this curriculum may not be for you or your child. Now I wanna just touch on level specific details. So pros and cons for each level. For the KA, KB curriculum, I really did love the fact that they incorporated not just like looking at the numbers, understanding numbers, counting, you know, reviewing all those kinds of different things, but actually having the child practice tracing the numbers. This was critical, especially for my kindergartner because she was still really um, learning how to do her numbers. They had a lot of that at the very beginning of the curriculum. So in the KA level, there's a lot of just tracing and counting and so matching up the symbol to the quantity. And they also had, you know, different um, tracing of shapes and things like that. So whatever connected to that particular number. So if it had a lot of curves in it, the image that they would trace would have a lot of curves in it. Another thing that I really like and I almost forgot to mention is how they go about introducing quantities and then subsequently the symbols that match the quantities. So they do take a lot of time to have the child just point and count and understand through pictures the different quantities of things. So this one we have a beach scene with fishies and sand dollars and things like that. Once the child does the 10 frame and they get introduced to that, they start counting the quantities and then putting that inside of the 10 frame. So we have this and my daughter was to put little circles in there to represent those different numbers. So now we're getting into this idea of assigning a symbol to the quantity. So we have the quantity at the top, then the 10 frame, and then we have, or I guess it's the five frame, and then we have the number that corresponds and represents these quantities. And they do it really, really slowly. So we have um, numbers one, two, and three in the beginning that they're getting introduced to, and then four and five. So we're filling out that five frame. After the child gets pretty comfortable with recognizing the quantity of the objects and how that matches up with the actual symbol of the number, then they do a lot of different types of activities. So they're circling the quantity, the correct quantity, and they only give them two options, so it's pretty simple. And then we have matching, so drawing lines to the correct quantities. And then we have little things like these are beads on a necklace and they have to recognize what this number is and then color in the appropriate amount of beads. A pro specific to level 1A and 1B is the fact that each of the lessons in the textbook encouraged you to talk with your child, talk them through their thinking process as far as how they're getting to certain answers. So it does ha have the suggestion of you don't have to have your child right in the blue square. So they have little blue, not squares, but rectangles where you can opt for the child to write down an answer or you can just talk through it with them. So it was very low stress, low pressure for me and my child to just kind of go through that without having to have them write things down. So it really does help the child to focus on their mental math rather than having to just write an answer down as they're talking through each of the concepts. Along the lines of the mental math, I do appreciate, especially in level 1A and 1B, the fact that they give you multiple different approaches to arrive at the same answer. This is something that was so important for my child because she did latch on to certain approaches, but she was aware of other ways to get to specific answers. Another pro for KA and KB specifically is the fact that the lessons in the textbook and the exercises in the workbook are pretty short. There are some that definitely go a little bit longer than others, like a few pages, but for the most part, it's something that 
we were able to get through pretty quickly. And so there were some days where if we needed to really focus on just that one lesson because we're, we need more practice on that concept, we were able to do that and it wasn't overwhelming. Other times, if we were kind of on a roll with something, we could just go through multiple lessons in one day and it was very satisfying. Another pro for this level is the fact that the exercises are pretty easy for my child to figure out. So the directions are pretty straightforward and while she cannot read those right now, I had no problem reading it quickly to her. They're very short directions. So once she kind of got the hang of certain exercises because they're kind of similar but they move along and they're a little bit more advanced as you go along, she was able to kind of do it on her own without asking me to read those directions to her. On the flip side, for the workbook in level 1A and 1B, it assumes a certain reading level for the child. So that's something that was very challenging and frustrating at times for me because I wanted to do the workbook as more of an independent work experience for my then first grader. And that's something that we we just could not do because she her reading level wasn't quite there yet. Now, we did go through some key terms and I had her memorize things like how many, which one, all together, words like that so she can kind of work her way through those different directions and word problems. But I will say it was challenging. And so if you're looking to do something similar to me where you use the workbook as independent work and your child is not quite at that reading level yet, you know, just kind of take it slow because you don't want to put too much on yourself and your child. Another con for level 1A and 1B is that the workbooks are not in color. And this is probably something that is just, it's so um, trivial, like it's not that important. It was, however, disappointing for me because I'm spending this money on the curriculum, the textbooks in color, why is the workbook not in color? And when I finally actually purchased KA and KB for my kindergartner, they were both in color. So I'm like, why did they print it this way? So for most people, this is gonna be a trivial thing, but I, was kind of disappointed. Another con that I am experiencing specifically in level 2A and 2B now with my second grader and I saw in 1A and 1B, it does have a lot of examples to work through with a child. And I, I know that this is something that's not specific to this curriculum. You will see this in other math curriculum, but I wish it was just a little less like tedious. Now I have adjusted the way that we do things um, as far as doing those different word problems and other types of problems by going through and circling the ones that I want my child to do themselves, especially when she's doing her independent work. So that's the workaround, but then that puts a lot on me because now I have to figure out, okay, which ones should she do? Which ones should she not do? So yeah, that's something that I would change about it. If you saw any of my curriculum choice, curriculum picks videos, you know that we are just sticking to this curriculum. And the main reason why is because it works for us. Everything about this curriculum is so simple and straightforward and that's something that my children and I really need right now is just something that's cut and dry, no fluff, and let's just get the work done and learn the different concepts that we need to learn. I hope that you found this Singapore Dimensions math review helpful for you. And if you have any additional questions, do not hesitate to leave them in the comments below. I will definitely get back to you and answer them to the best of my ability. Take care, be blessed, and I'll see you in the next one.